All right, welcome back to my channel, True Crime Fans. I'm your host, Tim Solberg, and if you haven't done it already, you gotta hit that subscribe button, hit a like for this video if it was worth watching, and leave a comment down below. I would love to improve my content for you. And for everybody that's returning, thank you for being a part of the community, and I hope you encourage some of your friends to uh, join us as well. So today is a pretty sad story. It's been just over a week since Rachel Morin went missing, right? Now they've recovered her body and the detectives have said that it was a violent crime. She died in a violent way, but she did fight back. Now Rachel Morin is the 37 year old mother of five and she went for a walk in the Mon Pa Trail of Bel Air in Maryland. Now what's crazy is that this trail is heavily utilized okay and the time of day that it was utilized there is said to be a lot of people that were on the trail as a matter of fact we just heard that some folks came forward to possibly provide the police with some details now they're not saying that they, they that these people have any knowledge of a crime whatsoever but what they're basically doing is very similar to the Richard Allen case where they're looking for anybody that was on the trail around that time to be able to provide any information that may be relevant. Now these people might not even know they have relevant information. It is said to be either three males with two females and two dogs or three males and two males with two dogs. It'll be interesting to hear what they say or if they have seen Rachel Morin's car or seen Rachel herself. Again, it was at 6 p.m. when she arrived. We don't quite know when the crime took place, but authorities do believe that it took place shortly after she got there. Now, we also know that Richard Tobin, her boyfriend, has come out and stated that he had nothing to do with the crime, but in most cases, the police typically identify the boyfriend or husband or the people that are close to the victim as a person of interest. Not a suspect, but a person of interest. At this time, the authorities have not done that yet, okay? We're gonna get back to Richard Tobin in just a moment. Um, a couple other things that I wanna note that, uh, you know, a couple of clients of Rachel's did say that uh, she's usually upbeat and that uh, she loves her kids, talks about her kids a lot. She had five children. Now that the client does go on to say that the past week or so when she was coming in and she was doing house cleaning was she was distracted. Now, does that mean anything? I don't know. Um, it could just be something that the client was picking up after hearing the story. It could be something that they noticed. It could have been work related. It could have been personal. It may not be related to uh, her crime, uh, but it may be related to her crime. Either way, it was a pretty interesting fact that you can read, and that was one of her clients that was uh, a client of her house cleaning business. Another couple facts that I think are notable, um, she does have five children with three different fathers. One of the things that I'll be curious to hear about, if any of the fathers of her children um, had any poor or bad relationships with Rachel at any moment, because that could play a factor going forward. Now, nobody has brought this up yet, but that is always something to kind of think about is past relationships. Was there any bad blood? Was there somebody there that, uh, you know, possibly could have committed this crime? And then before we talk about Richard Tobin, I do want to hit the fact that it is 6 p.m. It is a random park. It would have to be if it was orchestrated, somebody that knew she was going to be there, somebody that followed her and somebody that would have been in the right spot or know where she was going to be that at, at that right time right? Could it have been friends or family? Could it have been past relationships? Could it have been Richard Tobin, who we're going to talk about in a moment? Or could it have been a random attack? Now, one of the things that I would say is that if it was planned and orchestrated, somebody would have to know where she was at and they would have to know when would be the right time to attack her, right? And uh, that would lead us to believe that it would be somebody close, you know, possibly uh, ex-spouses, possibly uh, a friend or somebody that uh, would know her pretty closely or Richard Tobin in that fact, or could it have been a total random attack? Could it have been somebody that was walking the trail that day, very much like a Richard Allen situation, whereas 
they saw an opportunity and then they tried to take advantage of that opportunity. Now we do know based off of the authorities that it was a pretty violent attack and we do know that Rachel did fight for her life and that she didn't make it easy on her attacker to take her out essentially. So that's where I'm gonna put my question to you. A lot of people are saying that Richard Tobin would be the one that they would lean to and should be the person of interest or suspect. Now, the police haven't named that yet. By the time this video goes up on Wednesday, uh, they may have. I'm recording this on Monday, so you figure in the next 48 hours, there is a possibility that we would have a person of suspect or a person of interest and or a suspect, and could it be Richard Tobin? So let's peel back the onion on Richard Tobin. By no means is Richard Tobin a saint, okay? Now, he took a lot of heat when Rachel went missing right off the get-go, okay? Now, there is a couple of things I wanna highlight from Richard that doesn't really point in the way that he was responsible for this crime. First and foremost, he is the one that calls in the missing person just after midnight. So it took him six hours to realize that Rachel was missing and he decided to call it in. Not only that, he does lead detectives to her car and brings them to uh, where he thought she would be last seen, which was on the Ma and Pa Trail. So he does all of that, right? And maybe, maybe he watches a lot of true crime and says that's something that maybe a killer wouldn't do. Okay, fair enough. He also breaks his silence very quickly and posts to Facebook saying, hey, I could never do this. This is not something I would be responsible for. He really loves Rachel and it was a relationship that he cherished. Now, a lot of people point to his past criminal behavior, okay? He has been picked up 14 or so times, spent some time in the slammer. Um, you know, and it, I would say his most serious crime would have been second degree assault. I think he had two of those, right? And uh, I would say second degree assault is typically is where somebody gets into a fight intentionally and they do create bodily harm. You know, it could be a broken nose, could be a broken bone, could be scratches, could be bruises, could be a bloody nose, whatever that case might be. Um, things I didn't see in there was anything that led to murder. Um, I didn't see any domestic violence in there. So if I'm wrong on that, please leave a comment down below. Um, and I don't see anything in there that really states like, hey, he decided to turn into a violent killer. Now, I'm not saying that he's not responsible for it. I'm just saying even looking at his background, right, doesn't say that he would be a killer or that he would even participate in domestic violence. Now, I'm not saying he couldn't do it. It just doesn't suggest based off his history that he's had history of doing this type of stuff. Now, what his history does show is that he does get into momentary lapse of judgment and that he definitely wasn't an angel growing up, right? Now, he does state in his post that he has been clean for 15 months and he hasn't done anything for 15 months and that is a long time when you're on the mend, right? And what would really be his motive to killing Rachel and why would he wait until she was on the trail to do it? Would this be an elaborate scheme? Would it be much like Brian Koberger where he thinks he's smarter than the system? He decides that he's gonna call it in early because that's not typically what happens. He decides he's gonna bring the police to the evidence and show them where she was last seen, AKA Rachel, uh, making a post and breaking the silence early, right? Talking about his background. Why would he do all of that if he committed the crime. And then the last question I have, why would he do it on the trail where there's so many people that could have saw him? Now we're gonna hear a lot more information that's gonna come out over the next couple of months. Hopefully not like the Richard Allen case and it takes five years to figure this out because that seems like a long time. But are we gonna find out that Richard Tobin was a part of this or was it a random attack that somebody took part in? Okay, that's a lot of information to uncover. And what's even worse is now you have five kids from ages eight to 18 that no longer have their mother. Each one of them now has gone to live with their respected fathers, but they're never gonna get to see their mother again. And they're gonna have to hear about this on the news, how she died, how she was found, all of that stuff. And we just don't know why yet. So my inclination is saying right now, it is looking like it is a random attack, but there is still some senses back there that says Richard Tobin needs to be vetted and he needs to be vetted multiple times, okay? 
So they need to, to interview him multiple times and then see if he's got an airtight alibi, right? Especially for those six hours, where was he at? Where was his phone at? Was there any curious movements or anything that uh, could show up that might suggest that it was him? If they can take all of that away, I would say it probably leans towards a random attack. So based off of that, I wanna hear from you folks. If you stayed this long on the video, please hit that subscribe button. We wanna to continue to grow. Our goal is to get to 1,000 this year, and I know we can do it, especially with the community that we have. We've worked really hard on all of our videos this far, and I hope that the entertainment value is to your liking and to your standards. If there's something else you would like to see in these videos, please let me know. You can reach out to me directly. You can leave a comment down below. Um, and on that note, I hope everybody has a wonderful week, and we'll see you back here with a new video next week.